Olympics or maybe um, attacks from Zorak's pre-evolution and of course Zorak is a Pokemon with an ability yeah. so yeah yeah, no, it's actually, it's pretty incredible because, yeah, all the all the most winning Zoroark variants so far have used energy other than uh, dark types. So apart from, uh, Seb Simmons played a, a, a sort of a straight Zoroark variant player focusing on the uh, the, the dark energy and just uh, doing doing that uh, at the European Internationals. But this is like the first time we've seen, yeah, this is a kind of a Zoroark with a, a different partner, but still a dark type. So you can actually make use of even the, to the powerful Trickster GX, which is yeah. actually a really, really good GX attack, but just hasn't been able to see much use because the decks that are playing Zoroark haven't used Dark Energy. Yeah. So, um, looks like Tord has a mulligan. Um, Nico already has done his setup and um, yeah. Have you have you realized who's going to start the match? Uh, I don't think so, no. So there's uh, some... I guess we'll find out very shortly. There is... Uh, has got a starter now finally. Nico is going to draw his card for the mulligan and uh, now we're just going to wait for the signal I believe. We're just going to wait to make sure the players, both players are now ready and set up ready to go. Uh, there's, the, there's the signal, there's the handshake. And, the handshake and we are off. Here we go. Game one, round five and it looks like Nico will be going first. Oh, Nico has a Tapu Lele start which is not of course not the thing you want to see, but still he has an ultra ball probably going for a second Tapu Lele to get the Bridget. Yeah, yeah, probably indeed. So gonna be uh, we'll set up quite nicely here and um, going first he's gonna have a huge advantage, he's gonna be able to not necessarily get the first attack in, but he's gonna be able to the first one to be able to bench all the Zora, he's the first one to be able to get all those evolutions out and start drawing cards. And as you can already see, Turret is playing not the Zorak we usually see. He's playing another Zorak. Uh, I can't recall the, the name of his attack, but what it does for one darkness energy, it confuses the opponent's active Pokemon. Yeah, it's a which moonless is madness. Moonless madness. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, which so is pretty good. It is pretty good. It, it, it does. It makes a lot of sense to play this Zora instead because, um, like I said before, most decks would just play the one with the, the new one that could do ram for two colorless energy, does twenty damage. Sometimes that chip damage can you know, actually make quite a big difference. But yeah, now that you're playing dark energy, why not give yourself this uh, chance to confuse your opponent and, uh, mm -hmm. so, and you know, confusion can sometimes be really, really devastating. That's true. So now it's Tord's uh, turn. Tord is starting with a Bridget. Um, looking for, you know, the things you just need for your setup. Some Sneasels and Zoroaks. Probably pretty similar to Nico's setup. Yeah, yeah, indeed. The, um, so, uh, something interesting on this about Tord is that recently he started playing a lot, lot more quickly. So, uh, even though, you know, normally he'd uh, speed up a little bit towards the end, if you realize, okay, time's for sure, gotta. You know, make sure that I finish my games on time. But now look at him; he's just you know, he's throwing the bridge out there, just wow, throwing again. all his cards all over. The <laughs> this is reminding you of the international championships. Yeah, he, he definitely wants to keep the meme going. <laughs> just just uh, throw him onto the floor or the table in this case. <laughs> so he's gonna have a quick look as well, just to make sure that uh, he knows yeah. everything he has access to. And uh, yeah, there, there it is. Yeah, the two extra Zoros onto the bench, and uh, gonna get a Sneasel out as well. Yeah, it looks actually very similar to Nico's setup. They got the exact same Pokemon from their Turn 1 Bridget, so you really see that they play tested together. And, yeah. yeah. The one unfortunate thing for Nico is that he started Taku Lele and had to bend yeah. no one to do it, whereas Nico Tord started with a Zora, had the Bridget, and so he's able to have more Zoras in play and also not have to bench Taku Lele, so that's pretty nice for him. But still, Tapu Lele is not such a bad Pokemon. You could actually start attacking with it. If Tort now attaches an energy, would attach an energy to Zorua, Nico could also attach an energy and then energy drive for the KO. Or he attaches a double colorless yeah. energy. Yeah, that works too. So now that, uh, will be, that energy drive will be doing 60 damage and that will be enough to knock out the Zorua and leave them both even on Zoruas again. Um, and after that, it's just going to play an end do want to start seeing those Zoroarks and Weavile, start doing some evolu evolution, start doing some trades, start seeing some more resources. Yeah, so let's see what they can take off that end. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't believe... So, ah, so we see one engine card in there which they're going to want to... That's going to get traded away straight away. Watch this, yeah. Giratina yeah. promo. That's... Uh, <laughs> 
you definitely don't want to keep that in the deck when you're not playing against Greninja, of course. Uh, the, um, the, the ability of that Greninja makes it so that the abilities of Pokemon break. And then you, yeah. So no. no, 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 no. It's, it's, oh, sorry, but um, yeah. So the ability of Giratina, the uh, promo, it means that the po the abilities will break Pokemon. Don't do anything. So it's it's pretty much just in there specifically for Greninja Break because obviously that's uh, can be a really tricky matchup otherwise. They are also played against the Wobbuffet Mill deck because it also mm. plays the Break. Yeah. Yeah. That makes that makes sense. So then. Uh, that's, that's it forced them to not break evolve and uh, then that way or if they do then they stop yeah. your, your abilities are turned on again essentially exactly so no. so there goes a the slope stone onto the Zora and the active and they double colorless onto the bench one and then a second oh and he, he he shows Nico look those are my resources I have to stick more away but I just need to and there's a lot um, of good supporters in there as well really not what Torb would like to see and, and I'm not sure if that Sycamore was really was that great to me, but I don't think I see a Zorok no. in that hand. Not really, no. No, there's 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 the non non GX Zorok, but I don't see I don't see things that let him draw more cards. <laughs> oh no, oh okay, I, I guess I'm wrong then. So uh, there goes one trade uh, discarding an N, and after this he he could opt to evolve the other Zorok as well, but he. Might just decide that he's happy with this. He hasn't got many bench Pokemon though, so yeah, he's only got the option actually discarding the Breakthrough Zorark, interestingly enough. Yeah, maybe you don't really want to use it in that matchup because it's you don't want to play or have too many Pokemon in play that have abilities, and he rather decides to have a trade ability available than the step in of the other non GX Zorark. Yeah, that, 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 that makes sense because. Uh, you know, one day you do, if the Weavile is doing a lot of damage, and obviously that could be, make things pretty bad. I mean, we can see for Nico already, he's got two Tapu Ledes and a Zoroark out, so towards Weavile, when once it evolves, will already be doing 150 damage. Mm -hmm, yeah. So now, there comes another trade to give us a Dark Energy, draws two. I believe it's an Enhanced Hammer. That could be pretty big. Yeah, there is an Enhanced Hammer. You could use that to, to discard the Double Colorless on the Tapu Lele. Uh, but Mm, yeah, yeah, there it is. Hats are on DC, and then there's, uh, they just do energy drive for 60. So now it's uh, up to Nico again. I don't know, if you were in his position, would you continue attacking with the Tapu Lele or start putting some pressure on with your Zoro GX? I think if I were Nico, well, my aim this turn would be to get a double colorless, attach it to the Zoro Rock, Guzma my opponent's uh, Sneasel, and just deal with it before it comes to yeah. Weavile. Because then I feel a lot safer in putting more things with abilities out, and then I can start drawing lots of cards and pretty much see everything I need every single turn to do well. Yeah, KOing the Sneasel would actually be huge this turn. Oh, it looks like he's playing a Mellow, so we won't see a Goose Mine this turn. No, we won't. But uh, still, it's decent though. Like, yeah, definitely. Because <laughs> <laughs> now he'll be able to. And if he's doing this, I can only imagine he has a second Zorok in his hand so that he can just trade after he does this Yes, of course. And uh, see what he actually... And it looking towards face, towards face, he does not really look happy. I don't know, but to me that, that's more of a look of, oh, this is a thing that's happening. Like, I, 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 don't think, I, I think that might just be his concentration face. Uh, I, I, I could be wrong. But uh, yeah, there goes the second trade as, as we just predicted. And uh, I actually didn't see what Nico put to the top of his deck with the Mallow. That uh, there is. Are those two puzzles of time in his hand? Potentially? He's retreating. I think we're just going to see a ride speeding here for. Yeah. Like, going to be. 120. So yes. now, what a good turn for Torb would be. If you could ace a roller onto the, the onto the Zoroark, bring up the Sneasel, evolve it to a Weavile, attach a choice band, and then it looks like his only supporter card is Cynthia. So well, like, okay, well, I guess that's not happening then. <laughs> but oh, he's digging. Well, that's a Bridget though. And there's a ooh, there's two oh. puzzles. So he has the option for double puzzle now. Whether he goes for it is another matter, but and, but do you know what exactly is in his discard pile? Oh, it's quite big. It is quite big. I underestimated it. Hmm. <laughs> Curious as to 
whether there's anything in there that will actually help him. Unfortunately, we can't see if he... Ah, oh, enhanced hammer. Potentially, yeah, you could use that to discard the double colors off of uh, Nico Zorok and then... <laughs> Look, Nico's laughing. <laughs> it's like, come at me. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I know you got double colors off. just show it, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hide it from me. <laughs> We should, uh, we, we should sort of make note at this point that uh, Nico is uh, probably has a kind of like a sort of a humorous uh, infamous reputation within uh, yeah. within uh, within Limitless Team for being the one who sends <laughs> the most angry emojis. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But yeah. so he's a super nice guy. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Looks like Tor decided to actually play the Bridget. Because I mean, probably he's getting all the cards he he would hope for from the Cynthia also through the Puzzle of Times. Yeah. So. And what you can do here is uh, yeah, attach double colorless, and uh, he's actually going to hold off on the double color for now. Just going to do a hundred damage. I'm not so sure if I well. Actually, he showed Nico that he has Puzzle of Time because he already sorted his discard pile, he really thought about it, and he was almost ready to play the double puzzle, so... Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? So so now, instead, uh, Nico might be very quite seriously digging for an end if he can. Um, yeah. But I don't really see how he can best to capitalize on the situation. It does an enhanced hammer of his own, actually. That's pretty cool. So you can use that to discard towards DC there. And, uh, oh, he actually fires back mm -hmm. of his own double puzzle. Very, very strong. Oh, yeah. Double puzzle, but I'm probably digging for some energies. Double colorless energy and... And a dark energy. Interesting. Interesting indeed. So... What does this mean now? There's a Guzma gonna be bringing up the. We be bring up towards Zora, touching his own double colorless, and actually getting a knockout with Rise's beating. And uh, Nico is gonna take an early lead in this game. Yeah, and now Tord is only left with one Zora, meaning he has only one trade ability available to him, uh, which is not that great. No, it's not. That, that's not drawing lots of cards, that's only drawing some cards. <laughs> yeah. And uh, there's... Uh, here we go. Actually, we just uh, lost, the, lost the video temporarily, so we're just going to... Hold on. Yeah, we, we can't see the game at the moment, but yeah. uh, our technician is going to fix it real quick, hopefully. Yeah. So... So sorry guys, just sort of also waiting for the, to get get the video feedback. Uh, we actually can't see what's going on, so it's gonna look very humorous when we look back and see that. Uh, okay, so some stuff has happened. I'm assuming to draw more cards because I see a second Zorok on the field. But uh, as we were saying before, um, yeah, if you only have one Zorok out in the field, that's only drawing you know a few cards. You don't want to, you don't want to do that with Zorok. You want to draw lots of cards, so <laughs> you want to try and you know. Get out more Zoroaks as whatever possible, and uh, now there's two Sneasels on the bench, so which could evolve into Weavile. Um, but it doesn't. I don't know if Todd has access to Weavile yet. He's got the Ultra Ball, but we don't know what his prizes look like. Sadly, we, uh, we don't have the same prize cam technology <laughs> that uh, that we did that it's on the history. Oh, Not quite yet. Not quite yet. <laughs> uh, but then, oh, there is the Weavile though. So this could put in a lot of hurt onto Nico now because there is. Four Pokemon abilities on Nico's side of the field. It's actually quite interesting because this is the first Weavile we see in this game. Oh, yeah, it looks is. like Tord. No, oh, yeah. He has all his cards back. Yeah. Well, the Tord has double puzzle as well, so I'm assuming he's just going to double puzzle for Dark Energy and a Choice Band and then just get the KO on the Zorak. Or you could just go for a Dark Energy and Guzma just to KO the, the damage to Zorak on Nico's mm. bench. Give away. He's still debating that decision now. Again. <laughs> and so now there's the double puzzle. They're actually going to go for Tapulele and Dark Energy. So he obviously he doesn't have the Guzma in his discard power yet, but he can use the, the uh, he can use the Tapulele to just grab one. 
And yeah. actually, actually, no, we're going to go oh, for Mallow gonna... instead. Oh, so you can search for the choice band, of course. Yeah, that, 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 this makes sense. Yeah, this makes sense because then he could also maybe pick another supporter card to have it, something to work with the next turns. Even so, he has some trade abilities available. So. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, there is the Mallow. Mallow for. The water was a choice band, but I'm not sure about the other one. And also, this means that actually he must have not. <coughs> <Is that? coughs> oh, it seems like there's some kind of issue going on. There was. It looks like Nico is like debating something about towards discard pile. Mm -hmm. Saying that there was a Guzma with DC. What? I mean, I'm not quite sure what's going on here. There's, there's um. Yeah, yeah, there's um. Yeah. yeah there's, there's some kind of debate going on here, so we might have to just get this to sort it out quickly. Um, yeah, no, that's yeah. A, bit, a, bit, a bit strange. It is a bit strange, but I'm sure our uh, our judges are going to solve the issue. So, in the meantime, uh, what do you think about this new deck, Nick? It's How do you think the the matchups of this deck are like? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, we don't know, we didn't see. Oh. So it looks like the debate is about how many trades he did, and that was, annoyingly, that was the one thing we didn't see because that was when the camera cut out. <laughs> he like evolved the Zoroark, and then like the, and then the, well, he was about to evolve Zoroark, and then the camera cut out, and then it came back, but we didn't actually see where he did second trade or not. That's... Okay. Yeah. yeah, it looks like so it's been sorted now. He traded only once, so let's go back into the game. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, sorry about that, sorry about that, folks. Yeah, there it is. So. Now, uh, Tordis looked through his deck after doing that Mallow. He's already picked his two cards, but uh, there is. Now, yeah, there, there it is. It looks like it's all good now. And uh, there's the trade as well, picking up the cards, and uh, on goes the Dark End, the Choice Band, and uh, there Look is. Look how fast he's playing yeah. again. Yeah, he doesn't want to waste any time, and there goes the. Now, oh, what's, the what's the name of the attack? The Rule of Evil? No, no, that's the other one. That's the Weavile that hits. Every Pokemon with an ability yeah. for an amount of damage rather than. Evil ad admonition. There they are, that. <laughs> I wonder if we could have a nice graphic for the Weavile. Yeah, we could cool. bring mm. it up to you, we show you guys at home as well. Yeah. Now, back to Nico's turn. There goes a trade. Uh, it's guarding a Mew, actually. Yeah, I'm not going to be that useful in this matchup. Yeah, so. no, you don't need Mew in that matchup. Yeah. And then, now, going into uh, There's one trade done. So, you know, we. The second one going in for the end, going to as well, and uh, see the see the you know, they see the Bridgets as well. So you're only gonna be able to get one Pokemon off that, but I guess that's all he really needs. He just wants to make sure that he's doing enough damage with Rice beating, because uh, I believe the Weavile has 110 HP. Yeah, it looks like he did not use oh, the oh, Bridget to get any Pokemon, oh. and maybe he used it rather to check what. What cards are still in his deck to see what options are available? Yeah, and actually, especially considering he actually doesn't need to bench it to kill this Weavile, because actually he has only 90 HP. I'm uh, sort of just a bit just correct, so I had to correct myself there. And yeah, Evil Admonition does do 50 damage for each of your Pokemon's, uh, opponent's Pokemon that has an ability in play. Uh, in play. So yeah, it's just it's a really, really great alternative attacker that just uh, can get really big knockouts for only one energy. Yeah. And yeah, Nico takes a prize on this. He's only two prizes away from winning this game at this point. And his own Weavile is like waiting in the wings, ready to go. That could very easily, even right now, just get the KO on that Tapu Lele GX, for example. Yeah. Unless Todd somehow gets rid of one of his own Pokemon abilities, but none of them are damaged, so Acerola isn't even an option to do that. Yeah, and I'm not so sure they are also not playing uh, a Stadium card. They are not playing Parallel City, so... That's not an option yeah. either. Ouch. So, yeah, Todd might be in a bit of a spot of bother here. He can, uh, he should be able to get a revenge knockout as long as he has access to some kind of energy. But then Nico could very easily, or just almost just as easily in return, uh, get a knockout there. And, uh, and Todd has not won game one just yet, so I'm not quite sure what's going on there. There's a, um, there is a rescue stretcher uh, shuffling in what looks like to be a, a Weavar line and, some, and something else. And Getting back some resources is always great. Mm -hmm. And now, as we 
Is it going to... Let's look at this. So there's uh, going to be one trade right now. So he's, he's got the double puzzle ready. So he should be able to get, get everything he needs already. Unless he's uh, digging for more. But I don't really see what else he would really, really want to dig for here. There is a, uh, there's also an Evo Soda, so you can actually... Soda, yeah. That's good. Oh, now we can see his Weavile. Yeah, but well, he, he's going to use it to get out, to get back the Weavile. He just shuffled in with the yeah. rescue stretcher, which is uh, nice for him. Clever play. Yeah. I wonder if some of his Weavile's are prized. Uh, he only plays one. Oh! Yeah, both players only play one in their lists. So it's a, the, the line is two Sneasel and one Weavile. Wow. So it's, again, a very heavy Zoroark deck. I mean, and it makes sense, right? Zoroark is yeah. like still the star of the show. It's what, what will win you most of your games. To that. Yeah. And now there is a double colorless in towards hand. So that combined with the double puzzle means that he will be able to get enough Pokemon to the bench to actually KO Nico's, uh, Nico's Zoroark with mm -hmm. right beating. Although he's probably going to be more interested in trying to kill the Weavile instead because that only gives up one prize. And uh, given that there's three, four Pokemon abilities on Nico's side of the field, um, and the Zoroark's already damaged anyway, uh, Tord will be able to very easily KO the Zoroark with that Weavile. Yeah. So, the, the only argument for not to could be he wants to, if he wants to preserve his own Weavile uh, so that he can get the one hit knockout next turn on something completely fresh. Uh, but that's the kind of decision he has to make it this turn. There's two Double puzzle. puzzle. For an energy and... Yeah, I think he's debating it then. Yeah, it could be. I mean, late game ends are always pretty strong. Especially because uh, by playing this, he's basically committed to KOing yeah. Nico Zoroark, and so Nico will only have one trade, yeah. which makes drawing out at the end a lot less likely. This means he's going to draw two cards off the end, one card off his turn, and then again two cards from trade. Yeah. Now, in comes the Weavile, and uh, there's the uh, Evil Admonition getting KO. Up comes the Zoroark. And now they are both down to two prices. And uh, there goes the one trade Nico has, starting an Evo Soda. Uh, there's a Guzma though, and so oh, that's, that's going to be it. One. Nico takes game one, and uh, it's uh, very well played from Tord, but uh, Nico really just had the early advantage there. He was able to, to capitalize on starting first. He was uh, sort of ahead from the beginning, the end almost managing to clinch it there for Tord, but uh, the, the one trade still being enough yeah. to draw him out of it. And you could also see Nico being very released to win this one. Yeah, yeah it is. Uh, it's quite cool to see that. Now, um, so, uh, so apparently, uh, what's so for game I two? Mean, what, how what, do you feel when you manage to win against someone like Tord Reckless? Of course, Nico is also a very well-known player, but especially in these sixty-card mirror matches. Yeah, it's, it can be very tough because you know we all know that Tord's incredibly skilled, and uh, I, I think the biggest thing going for Nico right now is that he has the results and success so that he can sort of yeah. like, prove to himself. You know, I don't have anything. I don't need to be scared by this guy, you know, I've done plenty of good things myself, you know, why, why would I need to be? Yeah, true that. So, um, I think we are ready for game two. Yeah, so it's just, uh, yeah. going into this and, Looks uh, like they are just doing their setup. We do see a mulligan again, mm -hmm. this time from Torrid. Yeah, but, uh, I, I was told him mulligan last time as well. I think so. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. You can see Tord has a customized GX counter with a Celebi on it. <laughs> yeah, so Tord's a big Celebi fan. He's, yeah. uh, he's tried to, he has this uh, little Celebi plush and he's tried to get it on the official stream a couple of times, but I don't think he's been able to, which has made him quite sad. <laughs> That's true. So, so right now we see that uh, Tord is uh, going to be starting up with a Bridget. So that's uh, it's, it's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, he's going to be going to get himself a Sneasel and uh, and uh, two more Zoras, it looks like. Yeah, so... Um, oh, actually, no, he already had the Sneasel there, so, uh, he's, uh, so he's now got two Sneasels down and three Zoras. Again, a really, really good start from Tord, not having to use Tapu Lele, more importantly. 
Yeah, and he's playing very safe. He knows that Nico has the first attack and he just wants to yeah, save his Sneasels, make sure he has later access to Rewild. Yeah, pretty smart play. Definitely. I wonder if he is going to attach an energy now. I don't know if he has one in hand, but even so, I'm not so sure because well, all these basic Pokemon they are on a very low uh, HP count. Yeah, although Nico would have needed to really do something with Tapulele to punish an energy attachment, especially if it was uh, a basic. Uh, if it was a it was a double colorless, so then I guess Nico could enhance Hammer. But even then, it was like Tord opted to not attach anything, as now. Nico's turn, he attaches yeah. a double color to the Bent Zora and, and then just plays in there. That's not the supporter you want to play in your first round, but it looks like he had no access to another one. No, indeed not. So, down goes the Sneasel, and uh, they, looks like Nico's been able to get a pretty decent first turn in spite of having not played a Bridget. He was able to you know, get down a couple of Zoras and Sneasels, so, and a Float Stone as well, which is going to promote the Sneasel rather. You know, that go down first, then uh, one, and look at this, how quickly wow. those, look at how quickly those Zoroks evolved and how quickly that Mew hit the Discord pile for the trade. And yeah, then, of course, but you don't want to see the Mew in that matchup, you just want to get it away. Like, like, ladies and gentlemen, Turbo Tord is back, I've like, not seen play this fast in a long, long time. Yeah, but, but he realized that he is, is behind and time is probably low, the first game took quite a few times, so... Yeah, that's what he needs to do now. Yeah, he wants to win this series. He wants to win this series. Very, very clever from him. Also good that he was able to, you know, actually have such a good uh, turn one, just you know, mm -hmm. KOing uh, the, KOing the one of the Zoras with the, Guz with the Guzma, and uh, now um, if he got to see much off, the, off of this end, uh, I mean, the fact that he wasn't able to, it, he's going to struggle to mount a defensive response regardless. But uh, that Guz that 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 end combined just makes it even harder. Yeah, I mean it's a second turn for Nico, and still his bench looks quite empty, especially if you compare it to Toy's one. Yeah. Oh, he is now even just trading away one of his Bridgets, yeah. well, not keeping it for the next round. Yeah, because uh, I mean, it's it's unfortunate though, because this right beating is only going to be doing 40 damage, and uh, so here comes the Toa Tord again, trade, discarding in the end. Uh, oh, he's actually paused for, for once. Uh, maybe he's thinking of Kui, but I don't know he does much for him right now. Not really. Oh, I know, yeah, yeah, and then another one's guarding a Lele. Maybe he also just wants to hold on to that Kukui. I mean, look at his hand size. He does not really need to play a supporter card. Wow. Enhanced Hammer and Field Blower. Completely stripping. That's, yeah, uh, that, yeah, that's, yeah, that's just, yeah, yeah, probably more for just drawing the cards if anything else. But yeah, that's in hand hammer plus fuel blower, stripping the uh, Zorok of uh, anything that was uh, once on it, but uh, no double colorless, so just an attach to the benched with a basic dark and then a pass. Yeah, Kukui is a very situ situational supporter. Sometimes you have it and it's really good because it's just the amount of damage you needed to add, but sometimes. You would rather have a better draw support. Yeah, yeah, indeed you would. And uh, there goes uh, Nico's own trade, only the one. You know, of course, there's no other Zoras on Nico's field, so even if you were to find evolution, you wouldn't be able to actually use them to trade more. And uh, there's finally... <laughs> Turn 3, the Bridget. Yeah, not, not the ideal. <laughs> Least but not last, I would say. Yeah. There's... Uh, it's going to be... So he's going to want to try and get out as many Zoras as he can now. But, uh, there's oh yeah, actually interesting. He is playing. Well, both of them are actually playing one of this uh, new Oranguru Multi Prism as well. Mm -hmm, yeah. So what this card uh, lets you do, in case for any of you aren't aware, it just it just lets you take any free uh, cards from your discard pile and put them on the bottom of your deck. So it's just like generic recovery card essentially. It's actually really really cool. You can uh, get back all sorts of resources in the late game. It is really, really cool, and it also reminds us a bit of this uh, Twilight GX from just a bit. <laughs> yeah, it's like a, it's like a small Twilight yeah. GX. You're getting back three instead of ten, and but in 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 a weird way, it's actually kind of better because yeah. it goes to somewhere specific. It goes to the bottom of the deck. So if you wanted to play, combine it with say that new supporter Looker, which lets you draw the bottom three cards of your deck, then you're kind of like 
guaranteed to get those cards out of the discard pile, which is pretty cool. And also, sometimes you have to discard very crucial cards in your early game. For example, I don't know, rare candies or evolution cards you want to use. But at this time, your discard pile is also not that full of good cards. So with Twilight GX, you would maybe have to also put some cards into your deck that would just make it clunky. So yeah, exactly. Uh, no, uh, from Tor's side, another another pretty strong turn coming. Uh, it's uh, Guzma going to be switching between Zor Zoroark's, uh, bringing up uh, one of Zoras, and there's a double puzzle. Throwing it to the <laughs> table. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, getting back, getting back the Guzma and he had a DC that was lost earlier, and uh, and now uh, Nico is going to be again limited to only one trade this turn because both uh, every time Nico's put down actual Zora, it's just been Guzma and KO. Yeah, Nico now knows Tort has the Guzma in hand, and if he's not going to play an N, the Zora or the the uh, Sneezers are going to get KO. Yeah. Still, he is going for a Professor. I think he just wants to give himself the chance to see more resources and he, he knows he needs to mount a counter attack this turn so although N might be good to get rid of the Guzma from Tor's hand, he just needs to draw more cards. But I think N wouldn't be that good anyways because the, it's more important that the Guzma is not in the discard pile anymore. Tor has three trade, trade abilities available so he is he has pretty good odds in drawing into yeah. all the cards he wants. Yeah, exactly. So here comes uh, another ultra ball, and it's like, yeah, there will be the Weavile going down onto the bench. Now, this Weavile can't carry any of the Zoroarks, so it's all been quite clever about this. There's only three Zoroarks in play, which are uh, Pokemon abilities, so the Weavile's only doing 150 damage right now. Yeah, but obviously, Troy is playing with the same deck, Troy knows the math. Of course, he is really careful with what putting down and what not. Yeah, exactly. Rest of the from Nico sees him picking up the Zora in front of the skull pile and uh, putting, putting it onto his bench, but no double colors means no attack. And so now it's back on board. It is a uh, trade, trade, trade. Wow. It's all three of them done. And so there's another Guzma! Yeah, that's the Guzma he took with the Puzzle of Time. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't know why I was surprised that we were just talking about the fact he didn't end, so. It has a bit, it's a bit of hype build up. <laughs> uh, and there's a. There's a oh, a second Dark Energy actually, so basic Darks coming in uh, for the Rise Beating, and uh, now Nico has to be potentially a bit careful because um, the Zorok could. I was about to say it could copy one of uh, Nico's attacks, but there actually isn't anything that he could really copy which he couldn't use himself. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> the, the, anything, the only way it could make a bit of a difference, I guess, is that um, Todd could use Trickster to copy the evil admonition without using his own Weavile. So then he could use that attack with Zorok and follow up with, by using it again with his actual Weavile, if that makes sense. And Tord is actually in a pretty good price lead. He is already down to three prices, whereas Nico hasn't t took any price until now. Yeah, so really, Tord's definitely in the driving seat for this game. There's, there's the one trade, we're going to get the two cards, he fetched up Mallow. There's an enhanced ha hammer, it's called in the bench, double colorless, and two puzzles at a time to boot. Probably going for a double colorless energy, so Nico is finally able to attack. Yeah, probably indeed. And uh, actually, this has been really clever from Nico because there's uh, only two Pokemon abilities on his side of the field. So actually, that play I mentioned earlier about using Trickster to copy Evil Admonition doesn't even make sense because, I mean, we're not even doing 100 damage. What Todd really needs to see this turn is an extra roll. But is he going to get one? Um, both of the two players are playing two Acer Rollers in their deck, so not that unlikely, especially if you look at Tord's hand size and... Um, well, it's there, so... Yeah, there it is. Now, up comes the Zoroark. Interestingly enough, the one with four damage on it. And uh, there is uh, Tord's own order coming in. That's double colorless. It's going to yeah. be another right beating for 120. Actually, now we can see uh, Oranguru's attack is called resource management. 
which suits pretty well. Yeah, it does. <laughs> now, in comes something. Trade. Ooh. And uh, there's the next one. So this is where the Ace of Rail Wars begin. Much like uh, Zorro and Ice Squad Mirrors, a lot of, uh, if the both players set up equally, it can just come down to who misses Ace of Rail first. Mm -hmm, yeah. But so Nico is very behind. He is, but it's, uh, he can still recover from this. Like. Yeah, I mean, he must really believe in that, because if he would not, he has enough experience to know that it would now be the time to, to just scoop yeah. and continue with the next game to have at least some time to finish game 3. Yeah, but he's not doing that and uh, Todd fires back with another Acerella of his own, uh, picking up the Zoroark, bringing it up for another one. And uh, another double puzzle! Another double puzzle again, just throwing it on the floor, metaphorically metaphor speaking. And again, Acerola and Enhanced Hammer. Yeah, both of them know exactly what's happening in this matchup, so... There, there is uh, the relentless assault. Uh, the question for Nico is now going to be: Can he respond back to that? Like, if he can do another Ace of Roller in half time or his own. He needed so long to get that DC on the rock, and Tor just crushes it away with his hammer. Yeah, as if it didn't, as if it didn't even matter. And uh, now there's this. Here's the one trade. It's got his rock, and he has. He does have access to one more this turn. So can he find what he needs? Nico has now three Pokemon with abilities in play, uh, which puts Weavile to 150 damage output. It does. And now... Looks like Nico played a Synth. No, he traded the Synthia away. Yeah. And uh, he's like, he has his own Grishma, so now he's deciding to we got the on attached to it, and he's actually going to use resource management. Probably going for, ah, Puzzle of Time and Enhanced Hammer. Makes sense. Yeah. Toward, toward just nodding his head, like, yeah. I would have done the same. <laughs> so. It also looks like Toward's deck is pretty... Pretty uh, thin already. Yeah, well, he's oh, yeah. It, it's Four very, cards. very thin. Good, I didn't wow. realize. There is. Don't, don't trade again, whatever you do. You lose the game, <laughs> unless you play an N or Cynthia. So, decking Ooh. toward out could actually be a win. Uh, uh, I mean, I mean it, it, it could be. Well, well, look it, at it, his it, hand. Yeah. Okay, it could be a win condition if it was someone like who wasn't as good at the game, but yeah. it's sword reckless, so I don't, I, I'm fairly sure he's not going to overlook that. <laughs> he's uh, he he yeah. knows he knows his counts. He knows that he's uh, exactly how far he can go without uh, you know, without you know, overreaching. Yeah, I mean, I, I've just saw his hand size. There is very likely going to be an end in there. Yeah. And Nick is also playing it right now. Well, he needs to. He wants to make sure that, well, I say he wants to make sure that Todd doesn't see what he needs, but Todd does have three Zoroarks out, so uh, I think that achieving that noble goal might be a bit difficult. <laughs> <laughs> there is a double puzzle though. Oh, you go for it. And it's probably going to be uh, the enhanced hammer there. So that will discard the double puzzle off the active. And uh, gonna make it a little bit harder to to attack back, but I mean, it's kind of safe to assume that there will be a float stone uh, dropped here at some point, or at the ready to Guzma, because uh, Tord has played a Guzma almost every single turn. So, the first trade? Nothing. Yeah, you just go to Cynthia. is one of the new cards in, uh, from the new set. Uh, which is seeing play in I think every deck list we we had here and every deck we saw on stream already. Of course. Uh, it's uh, great. Trade. Yeah, gonna go to Malo again to make sure he doesn't uh, overstep his bounds. Make sure that he knows when to stop. There's uh, that's the last more. trade. There's an enhanced hammer. Ah, uh, again. And there's the float zone. There's a the dark energy. 
So he's able to now just do resource management and put some put some of the stuff he discarded out of the deck and uh, make a great sort of prevent the well make sure he has the resources he needs to see through to the end of the game but also not deck out. So now it could be important that you are allowed to put it uh, down there in any order you like. I, I'm not so sure about how many cards are in exactly in Tord's deck, but it could be that his deck size is so low that he could draw into the bottom cards with his trade abilities. Yeah, he could, and then if he could do that, then he could just source the win next turn, even, even if he draws his entire deck, he can just, you know, uh, get double puzzle for, a double puzzle Guzma for the win. Or he draws his entire deck without playing his quarter card and then ending. Well, you wouldn't need to end, you only have one prize left, so you just uh, you just take the win. <laughs> you just Kuzma the Weavile and KO it. He's actually counting right now. <laughs> Double checking whether he's done everything yeah. correct. He should be, he has, he has enough outs. So he's drawing a card. First trade. Second, Second trade. trade. Third trade. Yeah. There it is, so... <laughs> you can show you all. <laughs> Spread it out all over the table, and uh, with that, Todd will take game two. So, ten more minutes for the next game. Can they... What? Are they shake hands on it? Were they shake hands on the tie? Or, uh, no, uh, 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 I, uh, I'm uh, not sure. I mean, it could be... I mean, still they are good friends, and 401 is not a bad record. It looks like they just agreed on a tie. That, that's, that's strange. What's going on? So we're just going to get confirmation here of what happened. Yeah, I think they just agreed on the tie. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Tie. Can't, they can't even bother to play the rest of the 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so, fair enough. Okay, okay. so... Yeah, yeah they, have agreed, they have agreed to tie, so... Uh, yeah, with that, we hope you enjoyed uh, that that series as well. To the to seeing two of the of the Europe's best going yeah. at it against each other in uh, pretty much, um, you know, like I said, equal card merit. It's always nice to see, you know, when it comes to you know yeah. seeing when you see really good players go up against each other with the exact same tools and resources at their disposal. It's really cool to see how mm -hmm. those players think of the, the thought process and how that differs and how that can you know really affect the way the game plays out. And it's it's interesting, it feels like Tord is just able to pair anything with Vlorok and make it work. And they, it's just amazing to see a player also being so creative in deck building. Uh, even so, he's always using Zorok as like the basic recipe and then adding up some spicy cards. Yeah, yeah, and, and uh, there's always there's always something good to go with Zorok. Uh, it doesn't matter whether, it, whether it's... Uh, Galisopod, whether it's uh, Lycan Rock, whether it's uh, Weavile or Gardevoir, and whether it's Weavile. Yeah. Yeah, like, this card is apparently too good. Nothing nothing will make this card bad. Yeah. And uh, it seems like no one is playing Glaceon either, from what we can see today. So that was a card that some people were a bit scared might affect Zorox's playability, but that just hasn't happened. So Yeah, we haven't seen Glaceon all day long, but uh, we will see if we can still get it on stream. Yeah, maybe the one you know, sneaks in for the rest of the day actually managed to get to the top 32 or into like, the winning in rounds of later today, who knows. But for now, that will be it from this round. Obviously, there was, a, there was a tie, so there will be no winners interview, but tune in for the next round, which will be coming up at some point soon-ish. Yeah, Don't very go away. soon.